Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this one-up tutorial, we're picking a data set from UCI Machine Learning Repository, and then we're going to build a model from it. Then we're going to build a machine learning web application from it. Right. So let's see what we'll be working with. So this is the Chi Evaluation Dataset, which is a very common dataset. So if you go to UCI, I can't even can just get this particular dataset. So if I go to my data folder, you can see that these are the various ones. We have our car data car names and then a car c453 data set right so this is the data set to be using so we're using this one and then to get more information about it this is the various information about it and these are going to be the various attributes right very very interesting right so let's see how to work with it so i'm just come back to this place and then this is our data set right so we're trying to evaluate car using machine learning right so these are going to be our classes unacceptable acceptable good and very good which can be seen here right and then the attributes are these attributes here perfect now let's see how to work with it so first of all be loading our EDA packages which is numpy and then pandas so let's load them so let me clear off everything and let's run it from scratch so clear all output so be loading pandas and then numpy right to help us with our EDA aspect then also have some data visualization packages. We have matplotlib and then seaborn. So I just load them perfectly. And then for our machine learning packages, we'll be using logistic regression, multinomial NB from naive base, we'll be using ensemble, uh, random forest, we'll be using for the metrics, we'll be using accuracy score, accuracy score, and then we also split the data set right into training and testing, right? Using this particular training test split. Perfect. And then also be using a very nice neural network package or algorithm on this MLP, multilayer perceptron from scaling, right? Perfect. So these are the various things we'll be using to help us work with it. So from our data set here, we realized that we had our buying, our maintenance, and our door. These are the column names. So we'll be using that ones as the column names here. Because if I load my data set initially without this here, so let's take this one off. I've stored it inside my data folder. If I run it and then let's go with head, so it's, it's not ha having column headers, right? Which is bad. So I'm going to pass in the column headers here when I'm loading my data set so that it will be able to at least pick it up. That's the basic idea behind what you are doing. So I'll load it again. So the column names, then I'll pass it back again here. So if I check for the head we're going to see it perfect right very very interesting so we can use easy to work now let's check for the summary of our data set with the describe and these are the various counts the unique values and then the various parameters and the reason is not giving us a lot of information is that because having a lot of categorical data which are objects right which are strengths not numbers so it's going to give us some very few information now let's see the shape of our data set that we have. And then we can see that it's having about seven columns and then 1,728 rows. Then I can check for the number of missing values, which is going to give us zero. Even as from here, we realize that the number of missing values were no, right? That's the big idea. So there's no missing values here. Then I can just check for the value count to see the proportion of our data set, which is for the unacceptable, we have about 1,200. And then I said that we have 300, which is not a balanced data set. So let's try it and visualize it. It's always useful to visualize it, right? Perfect. So we see that this is how it's given to us. So this is for the unacceptable, acceptable, and then the good, and then the very good. We can also use Seaborn to help us do that, right? We're just going to add some color to it using a count plot. Very interesting. Very, very cool. Now let's check for the columns that we have. And then everything is working as expected they are all in the same lower case there's no mistakes in it then we can also check for the data types so if you check for the data types all of them are in object but for us to build a very good machine learning model you have to convert them from object into numerical data right so you have to convert this object into numbers so let's see how to do that so we'll be using label encoding so we can just create a manual function to help us do that right which is going to be the long method <laughs> then you can also use label encoder from sklearn one host encoding and then get dummies right from pandas so all of these are the various ways you can encode our data set but let's use a normal manual function which is going to be a simple way of building a set right from our unique values 
then enumerating them right this is very useful in case you are building an app right very very useful so if i come back to the label for the buying consider this is low high very high medium right which is okay but we can use it we understand this right so we can use this for when you're trying to build an app very interesting then i can also check for the unique so if i check for the unique these are the various unique very high high medium low which are the same thing that has been and en encoded here for us right so the same thing for the main maintenance level very interesting now i can actually see this one so let's use this particular format this is not important but this is important for our building machine learning app so i'm going to save this one and then use it when we are building our app right very simple very cool now let's move on to the next option so inside the next option i'm going to store inside a df1 this is using a different method so the first method was using a normal manual function so we are using the label encoder to help us encode it right then later we can try with the get dummies or the one who's encoding any of them is going to work so let's see the other one so i'm just going to save everything here inside a variable called tf1 you can also make it like this dot copy right and store inside a particular value it's also going to work perfect so if i come back to this and i go with dot head of this particular cell that i've done now you can see that it's printing out, out perfectly none of them has been encoded unlike the previous one right which was encoded very simple right now let's see how to encode them so we're using the same thing that we have done this particular dictionary that you have built to encode a data set so let's see how to do that so we just go into the same thing then we're using map to map them out so if i come back here i run this one i run the second one then i run the third one and then the fourth one right so this is going to encode all of them for us so if i come back again and i run it as head here you're going to say these things are only numbers right so this is numbers as compared to this which are object right very interesting so everything has been encoded properly very well so that is the first method now let's use see the second method so the second method is going to be using label encoder from sklearn process pre-processing so let's load it then we'll be using be initializing label encoder then let's create a different variable called df2 for data frame 2 then let's label encode it so we're using fit transform then it's going to iterate through all the columns and then label them perfectly for us if i come back to the head now you see that it's going to also label and code them perfectly right but it's almost similar to this right almost the same but it's very very cool right the same thing so you can use any of the method and it's still going to work perfectly now if i check back for the data types for the first one these are all integers and if i check for data types data type for the second one they are all also integers so if i go with the f2 all of them are also integers right perfect so that means that we can use this one to work now let's find the correlation between our data set since all of them are numbers now can be able to see the correlation between our data set using seaborn heat map right so this is going to be the correlation very interesting and as it goes down it changes very cool now let's work on the next option so i just check for the columns and then now if i go back to the describe now it's going to give us more information than the previous one very interesting so this is giving us more information because they have been encoded or like the previous one that was not very well encoded from here that's that from here it was not very well encoded so this was not a lot of information but this one down here has given us a lot of information which is quite cool right so we have a lot of information so you can see the standard deviation the minimum and all of this various information very nice right but for now let's see how to work with our machine learning aspect so first of all we're going to group our features together in our label so on our based on our data set all of these things are going to be our features and this is going to be our label right so we're going to call it as s features and then our like y label perfect then we need to split them together so we'll be splitting them into 70 30 on a random position of seven then perfect so let's build our first model so we're using logistic regression so we just initialize logistic regression then go to fit our s train and y train to build relationship with them then we can build our model so that's going to be our first model building then we can check for the accuracy of our model here using accuracy score 
then perfect it is about 66 percent you can also try it for the naive base which is also going to be a little bit around the same thing the same option that we did it's about 69 right so that means that the naive base is better than the logic regression then let's try with the multi-layer classifier multi-layer perceptron classifier and then let's do the same thing take some time voila using rel right Hello. let's check for the accuracy of this hopefully it's better than the previous one <laughs> it's almost the same like the naive base right so that is something very interesting so we have named to both our models now let's see this particular model because we're using this same model when we are building our app so we're using job lib which is the recommended way to save our models now is sklearn then i'm going to save my logic regression model and then i'll save my naive base model then i'll save my mlp classifier model Perfect. So we have been able to see how to build our models, how to save our models. Now let's see how to explain our models, right? So we'll be using some interesting tools. We're using Elan 5 and Lime. Elan 5 is explained like Amp5 and Lime. Very, very interesting packages. Then with Lime, first of all, we're going to create an explainer, which has three different explainers. We have tabular, image, and text. Then we are going to have a class name. Then we're going to have our model and our function. So these are the basic requirements to help us work with Lime. So I'm going to save it here. Let's start working with Lime to interpret our model. So in case you are not subscribed to this channel, you can also subscribe. And then check the link below for some interesting materials to help us master machine learning and then Python. Perfect. So let's import Lime and then Lime. Lime tabular because it's a tabular data set. Then this is going to be our features, which is going to be the same thing like our S features above. Then for our class, we're using the class label. So if I check for the class label again, so these are the class label. Right? So we'll be using any of them and it's still going to work perfectly. So first of all, let's create our explainer because that is the procedure. We're going to create an explainer, we're going to pass in our data, our class name, our model, and then we're going to work on it. So this is going to be our explainer. So using lime that's lime tabla, lime tabla explainer, we pass in our S string values, we pass in our feature names and our class names, then we set this this one to true, right? You can omit it and it's still going to work. So just created our explainer. Now we can use our explainer to explain a particular prediction, right? So this is the prediction. This is the prediction you're trying to, to predict. So let's first of all run it perfectly. So these are the values. Then I'm going to reshape it again as a two dimensional. Then if I work on this simple prediction, it's going to give us as one right so based on our class label one is acceptable right perfect so we want to explain why it, it gave us as one so i just come back to the same place and pass in that same value that we had here together with our model and the number of features and then the top label right so i'll do the same thing here then from here it's going to analyze that particular value then if i go with show in table let's change this one to white team like so that at least you will be able to see it very well. Same thing that we have, right? So if I come back to the same thing, which is I don't know whether I can see it well. I can just run the same code here. So if I run it, it's going to analyze this and give us the result. Very, very interesting. So the yellow, we have two colors. We have the orange and then we have the blue, right? So the blue is not acceptable and then the orange is acceptable so these are the various features that are pushing our prediction to make sure that this is the prediction that is given to us right so we see that this is safety safety maintenance and lag boots are the main features that are pushing us to have this acceptable right that is the same color that's why all of them are in the same color range right orange orange and then most acceptable is the blue one which is this one so the rest do not even count at all <laughs> very very interesting right so that's the basic idea behind that so we can also do another stuff here just as we have this we can also work on the other aspect you can also check this one here so also check what the various things we can do with this explainer not just show in the notebook but we can also do uh, some other stuff so let's try that one with the dir then esp so you can see that we have several aspects we can show as HTML in case you want to save it as HTML as list 
as map as pi plot figure as you as you wish so let's try it with the as list and as pi plot figure i'll just come back to this place hopefully that not crack crash the sp dot as list so at least it's going to list the various features for us right so if i go with this option okay so these are the various features and then they are written which is similar to this same thing here right these particular values very interesting and i can also do the same thing for the as plot figure here right in case you also want to get it as a plot figure so come back to the same thing here then go with sp dot as plot figure which is going to be this then i need to plot it right so if i go with plt dot show it's going to plot it perfectly for us very interesting very very cool which is almost the same thing as here right this particular stuff here so in case you want to see it clear you can use this option which is almost the same right very very interesting look at explain here for the class acc very nice and very cool so that's something very basic you can do with line right very very cool so you're able to see how to explain a simple prediction using line now let's see how to do the same thing with eli5 right so eli5 is very simple you build the explainer you provide the model then you provide the features and the feature name so just import eli5 then I'm going to show the various weights. So the showing the weight is going to be something similar. I'm going to show the weight for our model, which of the features contribute more to making our prediction, right? So I go with show weight. I'm going to show it perfectly for us. So these are the various weights. So this is without the feature name. So we don't know what is the weight, but we can supply that particular option here, feature name and a target name. And it's going to give us a more better explanation, right? Very interesting. So this was just numbers here these are all numbers but when i supply the feature names and the target names it's going to automatically substitute them for us so these are the various features that are going to be used to contribute to give us this particular prediction of zero of one of two of three right so the color blue the color green means that it's giving us the highest prediction and this is the least right this is the bias intercept perfect so now let's try it with the same single prediction as we did which was as a table here then you are doing the same thing to explain that particular prediction for us and this is the result so why did it give us that particular prediction so this is the various result that's given to us very very interesting so thank you for watching this tutorial in case you have any question or contribution you can just put inside the co comment section and please don't forget to subscribe and share stay blessed so in the next session we're trying to see how to build a simple app with the models that we see Thank you and stay blessed.